Coming up on Ask the Tech Guy, why your internet traffic is private and secure. Next. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass? Can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Leo Laporte here. Time for another Ask the Tech Guy. A question from our ham friend, John, who writes, In your episode 39, a couple weeks back, you did an excellent job, thank you, of explaining public key and private key cryptography. My question is, how does HTTPS and TLS encryption work? Unless I'm mistaken, those two protocols are doing encryption without the use of public or private keys. John, it's a great question, and I'm glad to explain it because it, it helps understand, helps us understand how our web traffic is secured. Encryption is used, that encryption is that word we used before about scrambling the data so no one can read it except the sender and the recipient. It's used during your web sessions for a number of reasons, to prevent eavesdropping, a man-in-the-middle attack, uh, tampering with the data on its way, and to keep from bad guys from stealing things like credit card numbers and passwords. You'll see it uh, on your browser. You'll see that the web address is HTTPS for secure, colon, slash, slash. You'll also see on most browsers a, a locked padlock of some kind to indicate that it's secure. You can even click on that and learn more about the privacy in the transaction. Most sites these days use HTTPS so that no one can impersonate you or intercept your traffic. For instance, if you go to our uh, website at twit.tv, you'll see it's HTTPS twit.tv. You'll also see that padlock that's indicating it's a secure connection. And I can even click the padlock and get more information about the security involved, how it's, how it's encrypting my data. And even more importantly, who owns the website? That's, that's really important. So what is this HTTPS and what's it doing? Well, SSL, Secure Socket Layers, was first created in the early days of the internet to encrypt traffic between you and a web page. The first version of SSL that was released is version 3.0, and that was put into production by Netscape for its Netscape Navigator browser back in 1996. That's when it started. Not a whole lot of sites used SSL. Later versions were renamed TLS. SSL stood for Secure Sockets Layer. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. The Internet uh, Engineering Task Force renamed it, some say, because they were sensitive to the fact that Microsoft might not like the idea that they were adopting a Netscape protocol. In fact, the uh, TLS protocol is very similar with some minor differences to the original SSL. So when we use SSL or TLS or HTTPS, we're talking about the same, essentially, the same technology all the way around. You, you are both right and wrong about public key crypto. TLS does, in fact, use that private key, public key certificate technology that I was talking about a couple of episodes ago, but it only uses it at the very beginning. The problem with public key crypto is it can be computationally intensive. You don't want to keep using it during a web transaction, a conversation between you and a website, because it would slow you down a little bit. So it's part of the initial handshake. When you first go to a website, the website sends you the certificate, just as twit.tv sent, sent me the certificate to say, I am who I say I am. And they use that encrypted first conversation to agree on a couple of things. First of all, the cipher suite that they're going to use. There are a number of different kinds of cryptography that can be used in the conversation. And then they pass along the symmetric key. And this is the key. From now on, the sites are going to talk not with public key crypto, but with the more old-fashioned symmetric key crypto. You may remember that I talked a little bit about this, even going back to the original Caesar ciphers. The idea of symmetric key is you have a shared key that you both know. That key is used both to encrypt and decrypt 
the message. Symmetric key crypto is a lot faster, so it's much more suitable for the conversation, but it is less secure because you have to find a way to transmit that shared key. That's why we use public key crypto at the very beginning to share that key. And then from then on, once we have a shared key that only we know, the conversation can continue on. So it's both public key crypto and shared key crypto or symmetric uh, crypto uh, at the same time. You know, it starts with public and then it, it continues on with symmetric. Currently, we're using, I mentioned that we negotiate cipher suites. TLS has a variety of different ways of encrypting. Some of them, older methods, are broken or insecure or less secure. And in fact, the current versions of TLS 1.2 and 1.3 are far preferred over the older versions. Unfortunately, in order to maintain compatibility, some older sites, for instance, are still using older versions of TLS. So your browser may support older versions. As time goes by, uh, there's a strong pressure in all the browser manufacturers to eliminate those early versions of TLS. They're just not good so that they can use strong 1.2 and even better, the newest version, which was created in 2018, uh, TLS 1.3. Most sites will nowadays use TLS 1.3 uh, to talk. So you're right. Uh, for the most part, your web transactions are not using public key crypto, except at the very beginning. TLS works really wonderfully, and they have a lot of nice features that they've built into it over time, including uh, forward key security, so that even if your key is discovered, that public key, or rather that symmetric key is discovered at a later date, the conversations can't be decrypted. All of that's uh, perfect forward secrecy is a really clever idea. All of that's really good. It's doing a great job of keeping our web transactions uh, private and encrypted. Uh, great question. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad I could talk a little bit about that, John. 7-3. Uh, our show today brought to you, as always, by LastPass. LastPass allows employees to do their work securely, whether they're in the office or if they're at home. LastPass never shares your master password. That means hackers can't get to it. Encryption happens exclusively at the device level before your password vault is synced to LastPass for safe storage. And they're using the same security banks and military use, so you know you're getting the best security out there. Visit LastPass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's LastPass dot com slash twit and that's our ask the tech guy for this monday i hope you enjoyed the show i thank you uh, john for the question if you have a question for me i'd love to hear from you we can't answer them all by the way we're getting a ton of questions and i apologize if you haven't heard your question on the air i'm getting to as many as i can but inevitably some are going to fall through the cracks uh just email ask the tech guy at twit.tv and uh, i'll try to answer it on the air thanks we'll see you next week Bye bye Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.